That we chant 15 verses, but nobody but bought the no book. book. Okay. The book for Gan. Gan means you have to bring again, mm -hmm. and not necessary. Okay. Oh, you couldn't get grab a book from bookstore. This this book, <coughs> Bhakti Ratna. No, no, no. Bhakti yeah, Ratna, Bhuli. <coughs> okay. So we will not chant today then, no Gita. Right. Can anyone chant any verse without seeing book? Oh, I can stand Brahmarpana. <laughs> I can do Brahmarpana. <laughs> <laughs> At least. Huh? No, I have my uh, eye book. I can follow. Uh, everyone has the eye book that can be downloaded there. Anyhow, so, okay, I had chanted, at least I used to remember 12 and 15, both the chapters. That was very common. 12 and 15. Uh, I used to memorize. Urdhamulam, but I may not have forgot all now. Urdhamulam adasakam ashvatam prahura, 15, abhayam. Channang si yasya parnani yastang veda saveda ved adhascha urdham prashitastasya shaka guna pravedha vishaya pravala adhascha mulani Anushantatani karmanu vannini manusya loke narupamasseha tathopalabhyate nanta nachadir nachasam pratishtha ashvat Thamenam Subiruramuram Asanga Sastrena Drehena Chitva Dattva Padantat Parimargita Bhyam Yasmin Gatana Unartam Tebhuya Niva Chadyam Purushan Prapadye Yata Pravritti Prasrita Puranita Nirmana Moha Jita Shanga Dosha Jitya Vinibrita Kama Danvair Vimukta Shukhadukha Sangair Gachanti Amurha Padamabhayam Tat Natadabhashayate Suryo Nasa Sanko na prabhaka yadgatva na nivar kante tadhama paramam mama 
ಮೀವಾಂಶೀವಲೋಕೆ ಜೀವಭೂಟ ಸನಾತನ ಮನಷ್ಟಿಯಿ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಸ್ಥಿಕರ್ತಿ ಶರೀರಂಗ್ಯಾಪ್ನೋತಿ ಚಾಪ್ಯೂಕ್ರಮತೀಶ್ವರ ಗೃಹೀತ್ವೈತಿ ಸಂಯಾತಿ ವಾಯುರ್ಗಂಧಾ ಚಕ್ಷುಸ್ಪರ್ಶನ ಅಧಿಷ್ಠಾ ಮನಶ್ಚಾ ವಿಷಯಾಪೇವತೆ ಉಕ್ತ ಸ್ಥಿತ ಭುಂಜಾನ ಗುಣಾನ್ವಿತ ವಿಮೂಢಾನುಪಶ್ಯಂತಿ ಪಶ್ಯಂತಿ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಚಕ್ಷುಷ ಪ್ರವೃನ ಪಶ್ಯಂತ್ಯಾತ್ಮನವಸ್ಥಿತ್ಯಾತ್ಮಶೆ ಆಗತೇಜೋ ಜಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯಾಯ
मेवं अशंग मूढ़ो जानाति पुरुषोत्तम सर्वविद भजति माम सर्वभावे नारत गुह्य तम शास्त्र इदम उक्त मयानगुद्या बुद्धि सैतृत्यस्त भारतीमद्भगवदीताशु उपनिषत्सु ब्रह्म विद्यागशास्त्रे श्रीकृष्णाजुन संवाद पुषोत्तम योग नाम पंचदशोध्या India in lot of ashrams they chant this before every meal. Every meal, even in our Sharada pit, eh, they they <coughs> have to practice to before meal. They they will serve, but you go on chanting. Finish the fifteen chapter, Correct. this chapter. Why before the meal? We do too. That's the tradition in Himalayas also, because other verses are so big, and this is also oh. the very very essential points are here. All Gita mantras are special, but fifteen chapter being small, also very profound thoughts are there. So that's why they remember. See, if you memorize, you know, then you can really go verse verse, and the meaning will reveal in your heart. But we see and focus one verse, forget the other verse, so we don't link together. So if you can really memorize, that is the benefit of memorizing. You can move on the thought process of the entire chapter. And the essence of the meaning, you can absorb that. That's the best. Right after finishing this one, then when your concentration is going for food, then it is not going to be taken away. Right? Why not? Don't pachami annam chaturbi dham. Think that way. These are these are to make it practical. Ah, uh, that who digest your food? You think I am eating? I am digesting. I think ahong vishya na robutwa. Just any idea ahong sarvasso ki. आधार आई एम होल्डिंग द होल यूनिवर्स चंद्रमसी चाग्नो व्हाट एवर द लाइट इफ आलजेंस ईट एंड थिंक व्हाट एवर द लाइट इफ आलजेंस व्हाई यू शुड बी ईटिंग मींस व्हेन टॉकिंग अदर मंडेन टॉक्स व्हाट यू डू व्हेन यू ईट यू चिट चैट ऑल नॉनसेंस व्हाट इज द यूज ऑफ दैट रादर यू थिंक इन लॉफ्टी थॉट एंड लेट द बॉडी गो ऑन इट इज ईटिंग बॉडी इज ईटिंग गुना गुणेशु वर्तंते This body is maintained by the guna, food. This body is made by the food, rice, dal, these, that, whatever we eat. This makes the body. So let this food do that business, and let my mind remain in the lofty thought. And spirituality, if it is to be practiced, it should be twenty-four hours job. And how much we we waste our time? How much waste? Huh? Yeah, that's why there are some disciplines in some. See, in France you go. No talk in the table, just yeah, eat. Mm. And in London Centre, no talk, just eat. Uh, there will be a, a be very very beautiful classical music in the background. You can absorb that uh, and just be yourself. Eat, think whatever you want to think, but you have no time to think for anything. Very hard. So we we are reading on page seventy-two of this book, seventy-two <coughs> chapter thirteen of the book. But it said that devotional discipline in the Bhagavad, and where is the place of the four yogas? That we are. So we read that that first paragraph only we ended reading. And what he read it is the end product of the long evolution of jiva. Extending over several lives, the results of the sedulous practice of preliminary devotional disciplines, generally described by the terms called the sadhana bhakti, or disciplinary devotion, or preliminary devotion, or which is called the vaidhi bhakti, 
the devotional practices according to scriptural injunction. So you do that and by that way you purify your heart and you are ready for the supreme love that will come. According to Bhagavad, all genuine spiritual disciplines are parts of Bhakti Yoga. Huh? Bhagavad, huh? you are a genuine spiritual person, then you are <coughs> actually practicing Bhakti, means you are practicing everything. How? Because the Lord has declared that He can be grasped only through Bhakti. Huh? Because by Bhakti only, in the Bhagavad. Bhagavad means not the whole Bhagavad. You know, the problem is that Bhagavad by the Bhakti school, they will think the 10th chapter of the Bhagavad is only Bhagavad. 1 to 9 or 11, 12, 13, those are not Bhagavad. Bhagavad is only 10, where Gopi's Lila is there and this Krishna's birth is there and all this sweet play, that is Bhagavad. Uh, but when you go to 11th chapter, it is Uddhava Gita, the top Vedanta, that they don't study much. You see, go to any Hare Krishna group, you talk about them, no, no, the Bhagavad means this one. And so emphasize Bhakti. Bhakti should be the only thing. So others are not but important. You do Bhakti, all will come. That is true. If one sincerely follow Bhakti, all should have to come. But they are little fanatic on that word. Only by Bhakti you will attain. So he can be grasped only through bhakti, that morality, pursuit of truth, charity, though good in themselves, cannot purify the soul if devoid of bhakti. And that the gold of the human spiritual science, uh, spirit science rid of all its dross only when put into the fire of bhakti. They say that bhakti is the most purifying thing. Uh, so you are you're, you're a moral person, you are in the pursuit of truth, a Vedantic way, you do charity. Uh, though good, these are good, but if you have no bhakti, it does not mean anything. There also, we, we also say, say in Vedanta we say, <coughs> you do charity, you are a good person, you go to temple, we will not do, unless you have to have the real intention and knowledge of it. Attitude. You are giving charity. Who, why are you, whom you are giving charity? We are poor man. No. That can make you good man. Good man. You don't do harm. I was talking to some gentleman. He was saying, I don't do harm to anybody. I am a good person. I do my all duties, what is to be done. And I sleep well. That's all. I don't care for anything else. That he thinks that that will lead him to spirituality. Yes. That is purifying because he is not a mean person, unkind person. Or not, he is not greedy or not cheating anybody. Moral person. Okay. But that is not enough. Swami Vivekananda says that is not enough. You have to think why you are doing. Why you are good. Why don't you cheat? Why don't you trouble others? Why you are so honest? For what purpose? Because you are pure. These are the expression of purity. When there is a purity, purity will express in this way charity, love, empathy, feeling for the suffering of others and, 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 and honest living. So these are the good things which can be thought about. But that's why here the Bhakti school thinks that Bhakti will do immorality will not only enough. You are a charitable person, that's good, but that's not enough for uh, in life's highest goal to reach. Still, it recognizes the distinctiveness of the three yogas. They make always that the three yogas, jnana, karma, bhakti, they are distinct. Bhakti school will say, these are distinct. That's why Bhairavi Brahmani even came and he told Ramakrishna, don't go to Nangta, mm -hmm. eh? Tutapuri. Eh? Your bhakti will go away. It is non-dual, no? I am not this body, not than mine. See, such, an, such a exalted 
teacher in the world who will be there who knows 64 systems of tantra practice Vishnava tantra shakta tantra all these such an exalted but she is afraid that if you mix with the person of Vedanta, then your bhakti will be uh, degraded. See, recently, Sarvapyananda was telling that I uh, gave a talk last, uh, before he came here, I spoke on Sri Chaitanya. And they said, oh, you can talk like that about bhakti also. As if bhakti is something uh, totally separate from jnana. Because he talks about Atman, I am the witness, consciousness, this, that. And what you are talking about, Bhakti? Eh? And singing the name of God. And they, and they are very moved that he speaks so well about Bhakti also. See, that is the beauty of this Vedanta tradition. No, if you say oh, you are a Bhakti, you are a Gani also. Well, that's the beginning stage that may say in the preliminary stage even they, those who are Vedanta they if they do too much of all types of things they will not be grounded but our path is not one way our path is assimilation uh, he is talking to the people we get the gospel we read at one time but I do not know who are sitting around uh, you go and talk to different people your talk will be different according to the people who are talking about. So, it's a meet, meeting, this, he's meeting the devotees, yeah, bhakti too, and in this the bhakti talk about bhakti. Yeah, if you talk uh, too much at the, at the unripened stage, then, then it will be difficult. You make your stomach strong, weak stomach, make it strong, and then eat whatever you like. Only soup, only uh, no spice, no spice, no spice, whole life. That's one, one type of it. They don't enjoy their life also. But make the stomach strong, digestive power more, and then eat all types of food. So Vedanta gives this, Ramakrishna Vedanta gives this, and Bhagavat also talks about, but they do not catch it. <coughs> Gita also. In many places, it is a harmony, beautiful harmony. Ramesh Ananda Maharaj used to point out uh, while teaching this Gita. You see, here is the uh, point of four yoga. Now, sometimes it speaks of yogas being only two, eh? sometimes three, four yogas, but mainly people talk about three jnana, karma, bhakti, dhyana, then on top. But some do not talk even three. They say two ways. One is jnana, another is bhakti. To sannyasins, a very high renunciation, jnana is prescribed. That is the verse, beautiful verse. And who is fit for what? Bolchen in the Bhagavad, I forgot that verse. He is referring to that maybe 11 chapter 27 or 11 chapter 28. These are the two verses. Uh, Bolchen, they, are, they say that those who are uh, not too much attached to the world, not too much detached to the world, Bhakti Yoga is suitable for them. Eh? And those who can detach totally, much strongly, Gyanopath is good for them. So it is a who's, which student is capable of which type of category. So Bhagavad says that to sannyasins who are of very high renunciation, eh? sannyasi with high renunciation, then that is good for Jnana Yoga. Eh? To those who are moved by desires, have the desire to do this, to do that. For them, Karma Yoga is applicable. This verse is very important, 11 chapter 27 and 28. And to those through the listening by the chance to the recital of excellence of the Lord feel strongly drawn to Him, but are only partially fit for renunciation. Bhakti Yoga is good. So He is delineating in Bhagavad who is suitable for Bhakti study. Those who are, I said, not too much attached to the world, not too much detached to the world. 
that that has been explained in this long line feel strongly drawn to him they feel attraction for krishna or rama uh, or whatever their chosen ideal but are only partially fit of fit for rena renunciation is difficult their focus is attraction for god renunciation is not the focus there do renunciation is happening unconsciously but those who are not feeling too much dejection for the world that's why that's why all the vaishnava school of people and the renunciation is not the goal husband and wife live like a very honest sincere devoted committed they need not have to be a monk some maybe but mostly they have their wife they have their children and their vaishnava vaishnavi we call vaishnava vaishnavi and vaishnava monk is also there but they they are they have the renunciation that's why they detach mostly but it is more for attraction for god and not so much for the renunciation side and vedanta students are more for the renunciation not this not this i don't care for this these are temporary these are impermanent no 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 and here no i love god and god has become everything my uh, every being in the uh, world is me and my wife my children my family they are also god's children so they are nothing it is not criticizing that one is bad or one bhagavad is not criticizing he is only pick, giving us the mindset which is fit for which type of mentality and doctor you go we are all patients we go to doctor doctor prescribe medicine differently seeing your condition of the health my condition of the health so in this world we have different disease this is the spiritual instruction fitted for which uh, if that doctor gives same medicine for everyone then what happens he is not a doctor uh, of course bigyananand maharaj did that he did <laughs> he did that true but he took the name of the lord and he totally intoxicated in god he gave whatever comes gamarika bayan mat karo dawai leke chala jao the doctor is absent from the dispensary and there is nobody to take care of it so bigyananand maharaj does not uh, have not studied anything on either homeopathy or either allopathy or anything in that way medically so he went and sat in the table and the, like in the doctor's table and so many patients are here and naturally ladies are come and he's sensitive to that ladies no so when they come and they talk about their physical problems then he, he said bemari ka bayan mat karo don't talk about your disease dawai leke chala jao take the medicine and go away Yeah, whatever he came in the name of Thakur, he gave one drop or two drops, and that cured them, because he has the farm faith. I am giving in the uh, name of Thakur, no? So Thakur will cure everything. That's a different, just spiritual person, really. But the point is that very uh, surprising. He does not care about those things. But suppose if I want to do, I will kill people. Is it not? Poor people will sue me. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> so spiritual teacher also say if the spiritual teacher gives the same prescription for an intelligent person who is uh, analytical minded and feed them the bhakti it will not work but they can give bhakti as we get trained they are tremendously bhakta tremendously gyani tremendously meditator dhyani tremendous the karma yogi so what they can do the to reduce my deficiencies in particular aspect in the in the teaching itself he will mix punch something push something so that you generate devotion for god or generate this discriminative attitude with your uh, devotional practice that means whatever is deficient we take vitamin c someone you go to doctor Some you if you what is that you take vitamin D. Someone says no you take vitamin C. Are you what is the deficiency of the body? Doctor should give that medicine. He is a doctor, good doctor. Otherwise, they don't say anything and give everyone the same medicine. What will happen? 
la ghetto tac, na la ghetto degli sprovar. La ghetto tac. Uh, if, if you if you apply this and by chance it catches the medicine, good. If it if it if it is if it if it you give throw the medicine and one will work. No, you give five medicine throw. Uh, so one will catch. You know, Samiji, our store, Sami it's so many medications that feed them like this. And they're going all over the floor. He didn't mind because <laughs> <laughs> he didn't care. Yeah. Isn't that true? Yeah. <laughs> Mostly yeah. he would get them all in his mouth, but if one or two fell, he didn't care to see which <laughs> one went. It could be a blood pressure medication, it could be the, you know, anything yeah, he didn't mind. Right. <laughs> yeah. Money, you are throwing it's it. So many medications. When he has so many doctors, he gave me yeah. different medications. Yeah. So you didn't know what was for what. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So that the doctor uh, who can prescribe the patient specifically. I, I went to Dr. Kaur. Uh, so many things never were diagnosed. A blood test, blood test, go, go. This, that. I don't know what am I eating, what am I given. She meticulously find out what is what, what is what is this, that's, doctors do that. And rigorously uh, discarded, not this, not this, not this, not this, this, then specific this, go more test on that and found out what is the crying need and how much is the need. So they are called these spe doctors, we call specialized doctors, no? So spiritual life also, it should be like that. It should be learned in a process that you do Mm, apply or give the particular deficiency what in you you can saturate it with it. By this the Bhagavata is not downgrading bhakti which it considers to be the highest purusharta attainable by a jiva and also as unavoidable for success even for a seeker after mukti through jnana yoga. Hmm? That means Bhagavata is not by saying so. Bhakti yoga is made for those types of people who cannot renounce totally but feels an attraction for God. Many people do. After the end of the work they go to church or in the temple, sit for some bhajan. They feel attraction. They do not know what. But the renunciation part is not focused much. We gradually develop love for God more and more and more. Right? So, um, uh, 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 would you please take this? I took it from you. Um, you can return it. Thank you. <coughs> for it is stated in Bhagavad, 10.14.4 that pure intellectual effort to attain to an abstract truth without the elevating influence of faith and devotion is like milling chap resulting in vain labor and exhaustion alone. That means this 10th chapter Bhagavad says that pure intellectual effort only intellectual effort and no connection of the heart. You don't feel attracted to God. If that happens, it does not do any good. That means, what is saying? Gyano and Bhakti punched together. It should be. As much Gyano, parallelly devotion. That's why Swamiji's idea that you will be just seated for analyzing the greatest philosophies of life, world. And the next moment, you will sit for meditation cry to God, pray devotional practices, tears will come down. That is the ideal condition. Eh? But some people may be temperamentally bhakto, or some may be totally jani. Very, very rare such people in the world. <coughs> Most of the people must have to blend this idea of four yogas. 
and Bhagavat also gives that hint but people don't understand <coughs> and if you use the four yogas then you can make your journey speedy and if you take one way only unless you are very expert you may not progress because your mood cannot go we are human being we have different moods uh, you cannot stay in always in non-dualistic mood how many are capable of doing that <coughs> in in the name of jnana yoga they become only uh, critics of the world only critic this is bad that is bad this is bad and seeing all the ugly things of everything that is not uh, parallelly this is not this god is the reality brahma satyam jagat mitha two should go continuously love for brahman or god should be intensified this side and parallelly consciously not this not this that makes the best thing brahma satyam jagat mitha and then maturity comes jiva brahma hi bana pare what am i seeing everywhere it is only uh, brahman only in the form of jiva jiva brahma eva na apara true gyana yoga is only bhakti with a higher degree of intellectual and less of sentimental element in it yes that is our tradition <coughs> in our tradition if you show too much emotionalism our senior swami is used to dislike it it is a show of emotionalism yes so you feel really attracted and you are sitting for meditation or prayer yes your emotions to uh, are deepening or you are getting expression try to check it not to show it to others and then you you will have greater ability greater power you put the dam there if you put dam the water reservoir uh, become powerful it can generate more energy that go as the level of the water level goes rotation uh, pressure of the water will be break greater little water comes and you uh, open the what you call sluice gets and it goes away it may oh, 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 what a big water flow no you are exhausting the water damn it so emotionalism should be checked swami ji when we be talking varanagar was that one of his uh, brother disciple was saying that oh i can't contain it i'm dying i could not see god he said that extend your hand you will find the knife there so in that way he was saying that yeah but they they are all great lovers of god uh, they are talking that's for joking but the question in 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 the training period of our life we should be balancing this the less sentimental element in it that means in the true gyana yoga what is true gyana yoga is only bhakti with a higher degree of intellect that means bhakti is the major thing i love god that is the major thing and because of that love some emotion will come but with the intellect jagat mitta this idea this is also not i this emotion is not all i reject that i need higher and higher like the the story of the what you call the wood chopper wood cutter mm-hmm. go forward this much emotion has come good your tears are coming down wonderful but check it and go for more arch and more devotion to god guided by the intellect so you know you become a dynamo then what makes the difference between uh, the brahmaganis and all our brahmaganis in our ramakrishna tradition all the 16 disciples but somewhere you find extraordinary manifestation like brahmananda and swami ji is an exception and in the disciples they are all brahmagani the manifestation is different so depending on how much they have checked the emotions and let me put it into deeper experience
and less sentiment element in it, a form of intellectual love for God and absorption in Him. Hmm, that comes. The Gani looks upon the Lord as his own higher self. Eh? How, how a Gani will look on God. God is not separate from me, but this self is the higher self. The reflection, the higher self reflected here. So it is, how to reject it takes the mind in that level. The lower bird, example, higher bird, example. The spirit of detachment and enunciation required for this discipline must be of a very high order, even at the very beginning. But as pointed out above, the discipline of a bhakto can be started even by one of less endowment in this respect. You may not have tremendous renunciation. That's the verse. He's explaining the verse who is fit for bhakti. For Gani, you should have deeper expectation. With little tears, little horripilation, you got meditation and you got little uh, joy in it. There's nothing. Vedanta will say there's nothing. I'll have to go higher. I have to love my own self in deeper respect. So, but as pointed out above, the disciplines of bhakti can be started even by one of less endowed in this respect. Besides, while a Gani aspirant has got to rely upon his own strength, Bhakta has always got the backing of Bhagavan, whom he approaches in a personal relationship and who responds to him accordingly. Now Thakur said, this example, Bhakta will have to depend on God. No, Gani, I'll do myself. I will do my, my, my own effort. But that effort is good. Nothing bad. If you are capable of doing that. If not, you need some support. But in case of Gani, it is not I will do. In case of Gani, there is nothing to be done. There is nothing to do in terms of that. Because Bhagavan is saying you will not be able to do. Only saying will not do. But you have to practice something. What is practice? Viveka Vairagya. Don't talk like that. Vedanta does not mean I'm doing nothing and then I, whatever I am doing, eating, sleeping and uh, shouting and killing and all these things, that's all Vedanta. No. Vedanta sadhana is there. Then what is the question of Vedanta books prescribe the sadhana? Okay. There's nothing to do. Really, true. What to do? Brahman is always there. What to do? Then what is the sadhana? Viveka Vairagya, Shaka, Samadhi, forget that. Reply me what I am saying. Then what are these things? Viveka, Vairagya, Samadhi, Satara, Sampatti and Mumukshati. What are these? Sadhana, Chatushtaya, Sampanna, Pramata. Vedanta Sarigya, very fundamentally, they are saying who is a student of this? This Sadhana, Chatushtaya, Sampanna. He is a student. The fundamental, you be a student first, get into the school. Vedanta school means ultimately nothing to do. But to understand the nothing to do, you have to go through this doing. Then your mind will be pure. Then you will see that nothing to do. I what to do? I didn't have to do anything. I don't do any. I didn't do anything in my life. But you are a student now. Get that understanding clear, and to clarify your understanding, and to to convinced about that, this sadhana is necessary. That is the sadhana for Vedanta. Then any anyone who is drinking drug and going to nightclub, this that they're all nothing to do. But whatever I am doing, I am doing. Eating as as we like and becoming a big uh, sumo person. That's also good. But I am what about nothing to do. It is not for idiots like that. Best on the ground of this purified state of sadhana, sadhana, viveka, vairagya, and both say bhakti sadhana. That's why it is said first bhakti sadhana. And then bhakti sadhana will purify and then your mind will be capable fit to analyze properly otherwise you will only do a show of analysis which is not leading to god realization those who see they have their deep devotion inside i this nitya sarvananda he was the absolute non-dualism mm. but i have seen him 
tears rolling down. They are so, this, this line what I am reading, I can visualize that guy. Outside, he is totally out. But in his inner feeling, when he talks about Ramakrishna, Holy Mother, they put in such a big emotion. Ramakrishna is different for, the, for them. And for us, it is another thing. To their Sam Kothar Kothar. Uh, and then that Sam, Antar Irvata. Whenever to talk, uh, so they become calm. They're almost absorbed. And then tears. I saw him, tears trickling like that. That's the atmosphere is created. Uh, Nitto Sarupa Nanda who is considered most arrogant person outside. Vedanto, total Vedanto. He has translated Ostabakra in his, when he was at the beginning stage of his life. He is totally Advaita Vedanto. Yeah. But outside is this. Now we go to Bharat Maharaj, Swami eh, Abhayananda. Talking of Vedanto does not mean that way. Who is greater than Vedanta? In our order, there is no one who is parallel with Abheda, or Bharat Maharaj. Abhayananda. Huh? Everyone respected him. Vidisharananda huh? Maharaj, etc. They, everyone is to respect him. Huh? Go to touch his feet. But he is sitting like that. He does not go to temple. He does not do any prayer. Bowing down to Mother's temple, Thakur's temple. Thakur's temple also is going, seeing, oh, oh, like that. Huh? What is this bhakti? Most of the people, idiots. During that period, I used to see. No, no, that is an idiot thing like that. But I got once his mala. Now, sadhana, come. It is not so easy. It is not an idiotic talk. Uh, once his mala, his rosary, was broken. And he wanted to get it done. It broke this morning. So he called me. Can you make something to do? But I want it today itself. You know, one day Mala will not be stopped. So I have to find out somebody. And yes, I found out somebody. Uh, who, and I took, my God, you know, our beads on the five corners. Five raised corners are there. How, how raised is that? And it is all polished. There is no raised corner. Whole each of the beads have become polished as it were machine polish. How much went on? How much for a gani like that? So it does not happen. <coughs> Anyhow, uh, uh, this to understood in proper way. It is not to not to say anything bad about anybody. But the question is that it is there is a sadhana for everything. Bhakti sadhana, jnana sadhana, dhyana sadhana, karma yoga sadhana. All are sadhanas. Spiritual practices. What is the spiritual practice? Not that true. You need not attain anything. What to attain? You are that. Huh? But to, then, then, then eat, sleep and die. Everyone is doing nothing to do. So they die like that. And then born again. And then again born and again die. It should be from the heart and understanding. I have nothing to do. All my activities, my body is doing. Guna, Gune, Shubhartante. Ordinary just talking will come. Sadhana is necessary. <coughs> Besides, while a Gani aspirant has got to rely on his own strength, as I said, Thakur gave the example, Gani will be like a uh, monkey. Hmm. Baby monkey. Holding the mother. I am holding it. It is responsibility. You are a gani, it is your responsibility. If you let loose, you fall down. Mahan has nothing to do. And Bhakta, I do not know anything. Ma will keep it me here. I do not know anything. It is wherever she keeps. I am happy with it. And Ma, you keep me in bad place. Okay, what can I do? Ma, you take care. Ma, 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 ma. <coughs> that also, not talking. It should be the feeling in emotion. When I'm in troubled situation, a bhakta will say, Oh, mother has put me. What can I do? She loves me the most. Ramakrishna is to go to that state. That mother has put this. What can I do? 
I cannot ask her to do anything. She knows what is to be done. Yeah? And the kitten, the kitten attitude and the baby monkey attitude. Baby monkey is the gani. I am holding. Yes. And that to be very responsible. That's why they are always worried. It then may fall. <coughs> but the kitten knows I don't have to think. Ma takes care of everything. But this genuine bhakti is difficult. Genuine gani is difficult. It does not happen so easily. The genuine devotee of mind, the Krishna says, <coughs> A genuine devotee of mind who even if he happens to be temporarily subjugated by sense objects is never lost he is backed by the power of devotion to me so that is why it is written Bhagavat 11th chapter according to Bhagavata devotional disciplines generates both renunciation of worldly objects and knowledge of God in a natural and simultaneous process of spiritual evolution despite initial deficiencies. As I give the example, Gyani path and Bhakta path. <coughs> you are trying to climb the peak of the mountain. How do you go? Bhakta path is that go the general path. Huh? It, what you call the trail. People have moved in that trail and you can move much safer. You go and there are vista points. You can sit there, as I give the joking comment, you can have a cup of coffee, then you can have some munching things and enjoy, ha ha ha, what a beauty you see, ha ha ha. Uh, this is bhakti path. Enjoying the journey and also external object. And now you are climbing, rock climbing, with a rope, rope climbing, no? And you are going, there is no chance of saying ha 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 if you don't boom and you fall where you fall for it's a chakna chur boss you are gone therefore it is a for people of strength people of maturity people of great attraction for the truth nothing is important i reject everything but only god uh, no sadhana <laughs> it is not so the climbing is not no sadhana you will reach to um, top automatically. No, I'm not saying not sadhana because what I was telling is doing things, but the example should be a better drunkard and all this. They are having the sense that I am drinking, but for the Gani process, we do not say that. The Gani, I am not talking, you are a Gani student or Gani already Gani. Why are you bringing the Gani who has reached the goal? I am talking, we are all students here. We are talking for how to, student will be a Gani student and Gani Bhakto. A student bhakta or student gani. We are comparing these two. Those two tendencies we are comparing. <coughs> as for Raja Yoga, uh, Raj, as Raja Yoga and Karma Yoga are concerned, they only subserve the purpose of the discipline of the Bhakti Yoga. So Raja Yoga consists in a systematic practice of inward concentration which is immediately helpful for depending on devotional sentiments thereby in the continued fixation of the mind on God. So Bhakti Yoga is it helps to attain your Bhakti by meditation because your mind goes focused in God so fixation of your mind into God helps you to grow more of Bhakti and <clears throat> which is immensely helpful to deepening the devotional sentiments and therefore you can be continued fixation of the mind in God. Regarding karma also, the Bhagavata holds it to be important aid to bhakti. Bhakti, to, to grow in bhakti, your karma yoga is good. Why? If you love somebody, as I always say, then you will be eager to do something for whom you love. So if you love God, then you will always do. That's why Vaishnava idea is Seva. Seva. Of course they go for only their, their Seva is only in the Krishna temple. So that's why, you know, uh, every year uh, the Krishna's dress takes 
few hundred thousand dollars. All glittering gold and this and that. Krishna, I am going for Krishna. So, this is the a bhakti starts there. But this idea of service, now Krishna is being dressed in the morning dress, now in the warm and a play dress, now he is going to uh, with the cows, that dress, now he is coming back another dress, as we do for the children, no? In a family, mom does that thing, different sets of dress in different areas. And this is the type of thing, dressing, feeding. Morning, my Gopala has come up, so he should be given butter. He does not like butter and uh, what you call mm, sugar candy. Sugar candy eh? Or it is now lunch, you will have to give the payasam and jilabi and this and that. Service, service, service. Uh, now you wipe the face, now you put him to bed, now you uh, uh, make him sit. Uh, that's it. Uh, Swamiji was a little um, <clears throat> critical because those who are doing routinely without thinking anything. They said that 24 hours is at this time the Lord is sleeping, this time the Lord is up, this time the Lord is eating, that time it is lying down, that time he is taking drink, uh, some juice, this time he is taking some uh, rice and this is, and the, here the human gods are suffering from anything. So he brought that idea to think that that extension should be, if you love Krishna there, we should love Krishna's children also. So that is the Karma Yuga idea in our tradition has come. Practical Vedanta to serve anyway you are serving God in that form. So it said it helps you if you take this attitude and then go to the shrine. Then your bhakti will be intense. So in Bhagavad's idea, <coughs> your Dhyana Yuga, practice of Dhyana and your practice of Karma both will aid or help you to grow real devotion for Krishna. Besides, <clears throat> now regarding karma the Bhagavat holds, it may be an important aid to us. The Vedas prescribe various karmas or ritualistic actions either as daily duties or as means for the fulfillment of desires here and hereafter. Besides, there is another kind of karma consisting of the discharge of the various duties of man as a member in the society. Both these kinds of actions or karmas are technically called as dharma. And the Bhagavata considers that if any of these activities are to deserve the sacred name of dharma, they must be conducive to generation of devotion in him. If you really follow this dharma, what is this dharma? That you serve the Lord and Lord's children, society, in your home, in your family, or in your society. You do some service and you do the service to God. These two combined together intensifies your love for Krishna. If they are not so motivated, they are vain in meaningless effort. Huh? Many people are doing, but it, it has no meaning. It does not give any good. So the Bhagavata looks after upon the offer of rich rewards of heavenly enjoyment for proper performance of the karma by the ritualistic sections of Vedas as mere eulogy, an indirect way to attract sense bound and childlike man to a life of faith and discipline. Just as the children are persuaded to take medicines by promises of sweets and shivers. You, you give many promises. You study well, then I will bring this this thing. The child is crying, Mom, give me. Well, yeah, I yeah, will give it first study. Sit here, study one hour, then. And the child in between says, No, Mom, I want it. Well, no, 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 finish that, then you will get it. Huh? So it is like that. This idea of going to heaven, this idea of doing good, I did good dharma, I will reach heaven. That is the idea. That's for the preliminary student. It's like a childlike in the spiritual life. And the mature people will say, I don't care for heaven. This is also nothing. 
is the same thing little extended joy nothing else permanent joy is not there so their ultimate purpose is to teach man to Vedic karmas and his worldly duties with a sense of detachment that is the major thing the Upanishad the Vedas they teach ultimately detached from everything you did not have to attach to the heaven you did not you are doing this this for the society, this for the, this service, this service is only for God and God in human. That comes. That's why you can the practical Vedanta. Vedanta comes there. When so performed, karma, which is otherwise known technically as dharma, becomes karma yoga. What is known as karma yoga, it is dharma, who is a real lover of his following the dharma principle. I am an honest person. I don't do any harm to anyone. I do good to others. I don't hate anyone. I don't cheat anyone. On the background of all this, he develops a sense, pure sense. And then that merit, meritorious act, take them to heaven. And that keeps the purity in the mind gradually, gradually, the whole life. You see that religious people, uh, dharmic people ultimately tend towards God. But it takes a long time. But then you mature. Then you see, I did enough dharma. I did enough of my service to others. But it does not give that absolute joy. So... Why is that? Then you reject this and turn your attention to love God more and more and more and more. Uh, so, Buddhism and Jainism, we believe in a very ethical life, Naturally. karmic life. <clears throat> we don't believe in God. Now, two types of Buddh Buddhistic dharma is there. You, you, you can think of the Mahajana or what you call the Theravada. So this the, they believe in different gods and goddesses and their power and their devotion to that. And ultimately, two people of two tendency. And it, even in this tendency, you can find people of Theravada uh, people. Or in Theravada, you can find the idea of the other one. So it is a maturity is the question. Uh, they ultimately, we also said, love Thakur. No. But love Thakur, I say in one sense, you say in another sense, and the Brahma Gani will say another sense. For them, Ramakrishna is all pervaded, Satchidananda. Uh, for me, it may be one good guy sitting in the temple. Uh, or someone say, he is a God incarnate. Just in the thought, they think. The Ramakrishna is the same, Satchidananda. But viewing according to our own measurement in our heart. So, and practicing, main thing is that you practice Thaku said. You practice whatever is your capability of your heart. Ultimately, God will, it will go that way. And then, then God idea will extend everywhere. God in the temple versus God everything. This is the transformation comes. And when experience comes, then the ego and other thing dissolves naturally. You can identify with the whole. So uh, we are talking about the important point. We are talking about sadhana bhakti. We have to understand in the student as one should practice bhakti. But I am not talking of the para bhakti, supreme love. In that case, jnana and bhakti has no distinction. And when you, as I said. The bhakta going this way in the, what you call the uh, scenic. scenic way. And the gani goes in this way. But when both of them reach the top of the mountain, they will have the same view. <coughs> but journey period is something different. And I finish this also, another paragraph. With stages of Shuddha, Roti and Bhakti. Bhagavata Dharma. So Bhagavata Dharma contains this three words, Shraddha, Roti and Bhakti. You see, this is in English 
there is no such word only devotion only love that is the only word no but here roti shraddha and bhakti three terms what are they in the generation of growth of devotion generation of the growth and growth you so long you didn't get the page what page where we are reading so long 74 Seven, oh, it's still on seventy-four. Yeah. Okay. No, no. Where we ended? Yeah. I thought we ended. Yeah. Now we go to seventy-four page. Your book is different or what? No, it's same book. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The stages. Oh, 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 there. Oh, the stages. Okay, I got it. I lost my page. Uh, no, you are there probably. I got it. I got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah, yeah. Page. No, in the same page we are. Yeah, I know. In the generation and growth of devotion. See, is the question. Generation of devotion. And the growth of devotion. What happens? The Bhagavata mentions three main stages. By living in intimate contact with holy men, eh? and then ho with holy men, and hearing their discourses on the Lord of Excellence, man develops progressively three things. One is Shraddha, and second is Rati. They get attached to God. First, generate love for God. Swadham means love and devotion for God. First point, and as a result, then you get attachment. You get attached to God. That is called roti, and loving devotion ultimately what we call bhakti. So bhakti we say so easily, I am a bhakta, but even the first stage we are not sure. We have the first quality. Shraddha. Second quality, attachment to my beloved Lord, and third, that is called bhakti. See, three stages. And actually, English word. How can we express this word, excepting only one love, love, love? That bhakti school have divided this love into so far, many delicate and many levels of many categories, stages. That is Bhagavat third chapter, twenty fifth, twenty five, twenty five, verse number twenty five, twenty four. Loving devotion is what was des described earlier eh, as sandilya bhakti, mature and well established devotion. Loving devotion. Now the other two are stages of development, and the devotional disciplines necessarily belong to them. Development of a living faith in God, in the supreme importance of a devotional life, is the first and foremost discipline. Very important. Suppose you believe there is God. You believe that there is, He can free me from all bondage. You believe that He is the Redeemer of the whole universe. He is the Lord of the. That it is called the. Uh, uh, Living faith, living faith. You have not understood it, but you are hearing from others. You have a faith that you have a living faith that yes, it is true. I may not have experienced, but it is there. All the saintly people in the before, in the following the path of love, they have experienced it. That one fundamental condition because they are living faith. You live in that faith, but you believe in that, okay? And the devotional disciplines necessarily belong to them. Development of the living faith. Now you develop the living faith. Development of a living faith in God, and the supreme importance of the devotional life is the first and foremost discipline. Quite a vast number of people profess to have faith in God. But it is mainly a formal or conven conventional acceptance, which fails to move them powerfully from within to aspire and work for knowledge and love of God. It does not allow them to go forward. They start at a point. We all think we are we are bhakti. There is no you are not having bhakti. A bhakti will have is you have a living faith. You go to temple. You feel the presence. There is. Somebody waiting for me. Yeah, I can tell him everything. He will. Thakur used to go to temple, no? Before even his 
experience is to go and cry and say, Oh, mother, you are there. Are you not listening to me? So you have a faith. Otherwise, why you will go to the temple? Sometimes the children go and beg mother. Mom, give me this, give me that. Mom does not respond. Does not mean that this mother is not there. Mother is there. So that conviction of the child is there. So even we start our devotion, we have this, should have this conviction. That's called the living faith. Most of us, without having that, we think we have bhakti. Let's say we go and use the temple in different way. We chit chat, we talk, uh, we don't feel it. And I have seen Swami Virajananda Maharaj <coughs> went to the temple. <coughs> <clears throat> and then he he used to wear a watch all the time and bare body but using a watch <laughs> like a, Ramakrishna like that eh? of course he has no watch but anyhow but but he when he goes to shrine eh? he used to wear a body it's a humble a humility a covering the body with a chadar like this and what happened? Chador was that and his watch was visible. No. Like a, in early days those values were there. Nowadays no one thinks that way. The watch is little, it, it is little visible. And he has gone to salute the Sri Ramakrishna in the inner shrine. And his assistant told me, Swadhananda Swami told me this story. And that he is standing there and he his assistant who is there, they couldn't understand. He's making an eye sign, say, no one could follow what he's talking. That means little of the watch is visible and how can I, Thakur, in front of Thakur, I can, how can I show my heavy watch? You don't get this point uh, unless you are born in that culture. When we are born in our early childhood to show something, uh, little gorgeous or something, before our very seniors, particularly senior swamis and things. Also for sadhu three things you couldn't use. Chata, juto and chuti. So all these things are signs of like an umbrella, shoes and uh, all these. Uh, chata, juto and ghuri. Sorry, chata, juto and ghuri. These three are essential but uh, I think they are like nothing. So people, uh, sadhus, sadhus should not have anything. And I am coming to Thakur. And this should watch is and Thakur will see that. See that what is conviction. Thakur is watching my watch. Mm -hmm. I should not I like to hide it like that. Not like that. Huh? So this is the simple faith, not simple, but it is here. Sri Ramakrishna is present here. That's why you can listen to Mahapurushma. Do you think it is a statue? It's a living God. Huh? So I remember I when I went to Swami Shankarananda Maharaj and asked for <coughs> initiation request, then said, go and pray to Thakur. Hari, I have come to you, you are a living person. He said, go and pray. When will be initiation? Go and pray to Thakur. Finish. And you did talk. And I, ah, but who will say any word against them? But the point is that what a foolish statement to my immature mind is, oh, my God. He will give the mantra. You will do the thing. Suppose you are the, you are the oh, man, a final authority. There is nobody in the whole Ramakrishna order to say yes or no about that. You want to give initiation, you are the person. And now you are saying, no, I don't want to go to the temple and pray there. Are you pray there? You are the person sitting here and I will pray there. What it means? That is living presence and their dictation, their instruction. I am only their uh, instrument. One Sunday, Jogatana Swami told, one devotee told me this once, that uh, what is there in Thakur is that two dimensional picture only sitting there on the altar. Then he said that, yeah, and you are three dimensional. What's the difference? If it is image, then you are also image, he is also image. So mm -hmm. it's equal, it's not no difference like that. You see that picture, there will be that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> You know, I came across this line in the gospel which says, Ramakrishna was saying, uh, have, have faith, depend on God, and Marikali will do everything. 
at faith. But what faith? This faith. He is there. She is there. She is listening to me. She knows everything. Still I cry. Why? To express my demand. To feel the connection. Mm. You know, as long as, as one develops in spiritual life, one begins to feel her presence. And she's very surprised at this many times. Yeah. I see her in many, many times. It's maybe I, I, I connect the two, the experience and mother. Mm. And, and consequently, I feel that she did this particular thing mm. for me. But it's a development. It's a very slow mm. Slow grind. development. And mind can get the glimpses of that. And those who are advanced, they can feel every moment. Yeah. They can feel every moment of their life is guided by God. Uh, they have nothing, freedom. Uh, they, they can't just remember it. Yeah. They can't just remember it. And, and experience. Hey, why are you so far away? Come here. I'm not to shout. You will not to shout. Otherwise, you will not listen. I'm listening. No, no. For, uh, I have to shout to <laughs> think that you are listening or not. You can come here or here. Sit wherever you can. But it's very encouraging once you begin to some of the experiences mm. and that you make the connection between experience and mother. Yeah, even, even you know, the whole Christian world stands on prayer. Their major, major practice is pray. Same thing in Judaism. Uh, prayer, prayer, prayer. So prayer you connect. Connect means it is there. You cannot pray to a piece of wood. You don't go and pray to the wall. Oh, wall, do this. When you pray, means you feel that there is a reality. And he is listening to your prayer. That means faith. We are talking about the faith. It is called the practicing faith. And that, I have not understood that. But still, I am going to the same photo. It is a photograph of Ramakrishna. But no, it is not a photo. There is something. And he listens. He appears in the photo. He comes out of the photo sometimes. So these are the experience, how it will develop. That is the beginning stage, he says. Mother says that even if you say the mantra, our way, in faith, and tell somebody who can do the same instead of doing it, it will be God. Yeah, intention, intention. The question of intention and your sincerity. And faith, yes. I am calling upon him. As Ramakrishna gave the example, is it not the child calling mom or dad in a language which is not proper? Ma, ah, oh, even the children can call upon mom, dad, not oh dad, oh mom. A baby does not say that. But mother understands. Whatever way, sincerity is the question. But that does not mean that we will wrongly pronounce our mantras. That is not necessary. <laughs> but uh, even if it is there is a mistake, it is secondary. It is it it it's its defects can be. It is very important when you are going for secular secular achievements uh, because secular achievements you don't exactly have to do things. But it is for bhakti. When you are doing bhakti then all these formalities are not important. Attitude is important. It is only uh, the same paragraph. God and spiritual life become real matters for which man feels it worth. In the middle of the paragraph. It go down, maybe 8-10 lines. God and spiritual life becomes a real matter for which man feels it worth while to stake his all only when he moves closely with the others whose life and conduct have a stamp of the powerful God love and spiritual experience. Uh, when it becomes real, then you get a stamp and people can see you and coming to you, they feel the presence of God. It is only from one light that another lamp lamb can be lighted. So the Bhagavata holds that association with the holy man and listening to their talks on the Lord 
and his excellences from the one single factor that lights the flame of genuine faith, Shraddha, in the hearts of men. Faith, how I will generate faith? Unless you see someone. But to see, only will not do it. You should have some faith also. Many people went to Ramakrishna and didn't understand anything of Ramakrishna. They are the critics of Ramakrishna. As many good people were there supportive of Ramakrishna's feelings and emotions, so many people were there critics of Ramakrishna. So you need some element to understand that also. Faith or Shraddha, the first stage of true devotion, is a state of mind in which the spiritual value is accepted as more fundamental. Spiritual values are accepted as very fundamental than any other. What is the sign that we have Shraddha or faith? Nochiketa, we have Swamiji praised that Shraddha so much. What is that? It indicates that is a state of mind, spiritual value is accepted as more fundamental. The value, my, my attitude towards my God, my love, my feelings, they are more important than any other feeling and emotions in the world, in the world of relationship. And man shows readiness to sacrifice and strive for it. The very important part that Holy Company plays in generating faith is amply elaborated in the second section of this anthology. Holy Company, what important play it plays, it generates the faith and that has been expressed in the when we read this book. For men of faith who want to develop attachment or roti, the attachment is a very weak translation. Roti is a very, how can it be expressed? Roti means you are such attachment. Huh? Uh, such attachment, it did, uh, attachment, <laughs> our union with a uh, feeling of connectedness, yeah. Yeah. Yeah? feeling of connectedness, deep develop, and loving devotion, the third stage, loving devotion for God. The second and third stages of development, the Bhagavata prescribes a course of discipline called Bhagavata Dharma. This is very important. We can give a talk. Uh, if you read this, then we can make many topics. Uh, Bhagavata Dharma. What is that? Three stages. Shraddha, hmm? faith, then that leads to bhak, uh, roti, and roti to bhakti. Shraddha, roti, bhakti. Which is the claims is applicable to all men of right intention. It is claimed to be much more easy and practicable than the disciplines prescribed by the Vedas and the Yoga Sastras. Eh? This is, according to Bhakti school, it is very easy to practice. You fall in love with so many things, you just shift your attention. Focus here, focus there. That's all. That's why Thakur said, why you will have to be, uh, why you cannot love God? Well, I cannot love God because I have a nephew. What Ramakrishna said, this is the shift of your attention. You love God, okay? You love your Krishna in your nephew. See? Krishna in the nephew. See? It is easy for us, no? At least we forget. But again we can remember, oh, oh, oh I actually fed my baby. Yeah? There is Krishna, baby Krishna. In the form of my child or in my nephew. So, even a goat, who said that? I love my goat. You love your goat, but try to see in the goat who is there. The love. So it just it is easy because we have the emotion, only give a direction to that emotion. And and, and but yogic path, Ashtanga Yoga, Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratahara, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi, Eightfold Yoga path. It is difficult. The whole Raja Yoga talks about that. In Pranayama takes how many days? Yamaniyama practice takes how many days? Whole life it takes. But here also Yamaniyama happens because you are pointing towards God. 
You are pointing towards me. God means your other aspects of life detest. Hmm? Achha, let me finish our four lines. For aspirants who are not learned in the Vedas. This is also another quotation from the Bhagavad. The four aspirants who are not learned in the Vedas and other scriptures, the Lord has given the Bhagavata Dharma, the path of devotion, as an easy way for attaining to him, says the Bhagavata. A person following this path never sustains any spiritual fall, even if he runs along this path with eyes closed, his feet do not slip and he does not topple down. Whatever a devotee does with body, mind, senses, intellect and spirit, not necessarily scripture ordained duties, but all activities natural to him, let him consecrate it all to Narayana by making them an offering unto him. Whatever karma he does, whatever thought he thinks, Whatever interaction he does, everything is to be given to God and God and God. And then he need not have to practice anything. Huh? All your actions, all your thoughts, only giving. And you have to have the faith. Whom will you give? That's why we at the end of our yeah, we said, Sri uh, Ramakrishna Arpanamastu. I offer it to Ramakrishna. So that should be the inner voice. Whatever I have done, it is for God. Yes, now you say. I've been wondering lately, you know, when I was working here, when I was still going to school, and I had my old little car, you know, my old little manor, and uh, uh, Shanta, um, Bill, came up to me when I was walking out once, and he said, you know, Sri Ramakrishna used to always talk about that it's not about having a lot of things, but what you have should be nice and well kept. And I thought he was talking about the way I dressed, and I said, I, I think I dress, you know, decently, I don't wear... You know, I'm referring to your car, mm -hmm. and I had that smash from the leftover from Taos on the left back side, the driver's side. And he said, he said, you know, you I have pay no to money. keep the inside, the engine running, but I don't have the money. Money to the do outside, the outside, mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't want to bother the Lord with the looks of my car, but mm -hmm. I thank Him that it's serving yeah, and getting me you, around. You like. He said, well, you know, I said, do you really think He cares? Well, he said that, that he wants us to have... Said, really? then, yeah, but you give him the money, then I'll get it tomorrow. Well, but it's it right. <laughs> no, but listen, Swami, so I said, really, you think I wouldn't be bothering? I said, I certainly am not going to pray, but I'm open if you really... Swami, you know, this is before I was in the garage. I had to park on the street. Very difficult for me here, you know. But I thought I had received a gift already because I found a spot right across from my building on Franklin went to bed, and there was a knock on my door around 2 a.m., mm. and I looked through the peephole, it's two policemen. Mm. And they're, you know, so I open the door, and they say, are you Taylor Donlin? Can I read your name? I said, yes. Um, what's, and they said, do you have a white Miata? Mm. White hair. Said, yes, sir. What? He goes, well, your car has been hit um, by a drunk driver, yours and three others along the road, but not to worry. We they caught her and we've got her insurance information. We would just want to make sure would you come down and identify. Mm. Now, there was some of my tail light on the ground, but this is exactly where my car had the dang, the big schmush. So because there I wasn't lying, because there was some broken red tail light, so she did hit it. Mm -hmm. So my car got fixed by her insurance. It was the night of when he told me that and I'm going Okay, if the Lord, I'm not gonna, you know, I've never thought to bother the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, what was that, Swami? Was it because I opened and and I was given this proof? I mean, is there you such a thing? That, way. that kind of a that will increase it, that will increase your devotion if you think that way. But it could that. I mean, what are the odds? Everything that, happens in God's will, so it is happening. Mm -hmm. You can think that way. Yeah, that's also true. Yeah. But you know, uh, but. Then your attitude was also true that I don't, I don't care. I have to drive the car. My engine is working. I'm happy Very with that. that. Yeah, and where problem. is my money to do the extra year? So yeah. when money will come, I will do. So you are satisfied there. Yeah. But he gave another perspective of it. Yeah, maybe it has happened. But uh, it, 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 we can take advantage of these incidents. 
this incidence we can take advantage so that we can grow in love for God more. So would you say that's a demonstration? Yeah, maybe to you. God said that, yes, I'm there. See, I took care. Because you didn't ask me anything. And I came to Santa to tell you this way. And then I did it repaired by this way. Glory to God. You, you, can, you can grow. Christ is to do all this miracle only to grow more devotion to God. Give conviction. Yes, there is God. Oh, he can cure my eyesight. Oh, then there is a power. And what is that power? It's good. Man, anything book gives you a boosting towards God, that is good. But higher and higher things are there. A high Vedanta student will not think of anything. It is a natural thing. The car has hit, this, that, that, it has happened. But a devotee will look at in a very different attitude. And it is beneficial also. No problem. So Bhagavata Dharma, three things. What? Shraddha, Rati, and Bhakti. Shraddha, Rati, Bhakti. And these are, we use the Bhakti so easy. So easy term. Before that, two stages are there. And in the stage one itself, yeah, it will be much sadhana is there to transform. No, that Shraddha is not. So here, Shraddha means differently. Sankara, as Swamiji said, and Nachiketa is Shraddha. Shraddha means faith, trust, uh, dependence, like all these characters. And that Shraddha is a, you are Vedantic Shraddha you are talking about. Sarsampati Shraddha. That's also different. But anyhow, you practice anything, all this will come simultaneously. Anyhow, what is the time we have gone? Oh my God! <laughs> Jai Sri Guru Maharaj Ji Jai. By the way, uh, this class will be started again. There will be a gap of this. Up to 18th. Uh, next we sit for this class on 18th of April. So the gap of this few weeks will be there because I will be out of station. Thank you all. But good that only there is only one viewer. One person is viewing this. One person is seated. What we are doing? Someone is sitting there and listening. And that is Ashok Chatterjee. Ashok Chatterjee. Most probably Ashok. That's who is to, yeah, in the Trubuko. Not ours.